Hi, this is Dr. Raj Singh. I practice in Las Vegas, Nevada. IV nutrition and IV drips are quite a popular option these days and are marketed to improve complexion, boost immune system, treat hangover, lose weight and so many other more benefits. So today's video is about what is IV nutrition? What are components of IV drips? What all is included in an IV nutrition drip? Do we need IV nutrition or is it a waste of money? Is there a better way of getting the nutrients without breaking the bank? So we're going to discuss all of those things today. So let's start with IV nutrition. So what is it? So it's a blend of multiple vitamins, can be B complex, vitamin C, minerals, antioxidants, all packaged in a bag of normal saline or another type of IV fluid. Now there are two types of vitamins, vitamins that are soluble in water like the B complex and the vitamins that are soluble in fat. IV drips traditionally only contain water soluble vitamins such as B complex, vitamin C, additional certain minerals, antioxidants such as glutathione. Fat soluble vitamins are vitamin A, D, E and K. Fat soluble vitamins are not added to IV nutrition. So let's start with looking at what all is included in a IV nutrition. So like I said, it's a fluid, can be normal saline, sometimes lactate or ringer, but typically it's normal saline. So first one is vitamin B1, also called as thiamine. Now it is an essential vitamin you know, that helps us maintain a healthy nervous system, good cardiac health, and makes it easy for our tissue to process glucose. So really important for those patients who have diabetes. The significant sources, how do we get it? Well, meat, pork, whole grains, nuts, you name it. Brown rice is a great source of vitamin B1. You know, however, when we polish the rice, all of that B1 is removed by milling the top layer. And the nutritionally, uh, rice becomes nutritionally poor, the milled rice. Now, if you are someone who drinks a lot of tea and coffee, or you eat a lot of raw fish, you know, that can cause a lot of vitamin B1 deficiency because these foods have enzymes, you know, they can destroy thiamine in our body. They're called thiaminases. So just limiting your intake of coffee or tea or raw fish itself can boost your vitamin B1 levels. Now the vitamin B2, also called as riboflavin. Now our body needs vitamin B2 to metabolize protein, carbohydrates, convert fats to glucose. That's why vitamin B2 is so great at you know, getting an energy boost and it's a fantastic antioxidant. When we have low levels of B2, what happens? Well, we produce low glutathione. So glutathione is a good antioxidant. So that means our body has limited ability to detoxify and deactivate all those damaging free radicals. So if you believe in glutathione, you gotta boost your B2 levels. Women who take oral contraceptives, birth control pills are a big cause of riboflavin deficiency. When you're taking birth control pills, you can't absorb vitamin, uh, can't absorb riboflavin or B2. Next vitamin, vitamin B3 called niacin. It's present in pretty much every food we eat, you know, so it's hard to get deficiency of uh, vitamin uh, B3. Now it helps primarily reduce triglyceride levels, so we use it in uh, medicine also, however the pill is poorly tolerated. If you have a severe niacin deficiency, which is sort of rare, it can lead to something called as pellagra, where you can have like a rash on your hands that looks like a sunburn. I have a picture uh, in below, so you'll see that in a minute. Now the other vitamins are you know B4, B8, 9, 10, and 11. No one knows about them or talks about them, but they are important. So I'll be making another video on those vitamins. Moving on, vitamin B5, pantothenic acid. So pretty much all the plant food, all the animal-based food, they contain pantothenic acid. It can also help reduce triglyceride levels. So if you know your rest of your cholesterol is okay, only triglycerides, start taking some B5. Now if you're always tired, you know, malaise, maybe you're deficient in B5, that's a common symptom. The vitamin B6 or pyridoxin, widely present in all the plant food, all the animal food, hard to get deficiency unless you drink a ton of alcohol every single day or binge drink or you're overweight or you're pregnant. Patients who are on hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, they develop B6 deficiency because the dialysis process remove all these vitamins, especially B6. So you're going to get rash, mental changes, uh, scaly lip, you know, uh, the tongue can be swollen, which we call glossitis. You could have depression. I'll have a picture of the inflamed tongue. 
as well. So you can see what it looks like. Now the vitamin B7, which we call as uh, biotin. Now if you have a healthy, balanced diet, you're not going to have deficiency of biotin. If you do take a lot of antibiotics though, or you're on medications for seizures, you're going to be low because both of those things, they deplete B7 levels. So in biotin deficiency, think of skin problems, think of nail problems, uh, losing hair on the scalp, and flare up of your acne. Now the B12, everyone uh, gets a B12 star once in a while, right? So it's an important vitamin. It helps us produce red blood cells, helps with our nerves, helps with DNA synthesis. Now generally B12 is not present in plant food, so we always say vegetarians are deficient. But if you have a breakfast cereal, it's generally fortified and has a good bioavailability. So even vegetarians are not necessarily B12 depleted. Now if you are depleted, you typically have tingling, numbness in the hand or feet. You tend to have balance problems. You know, if you close your eyes and you can't balance yourself, maybe that's a problem of B12. Your nerves are bad. Difficulty thinking, poor memory, you know, foggy mind, cloudy thinking, all of those things. Next would be folic acid. Now when we heat or when we cook our food, it destroys the folic acid. It again causes a red, painful, beefy tongue. So see the picture here. That's, you know what I'm talking about. Let's move on to zinc. So zinc is an essential nutrient. You know, it's involved in protein, helps with the DNA, helps with gene uh, transcription. Gene defici uh, deficiency actually is quite common. So it helps boost testosterone levels. So think of when we think of zinc, think of you know, sperm production, think of egg production, helps with the immune system, wound repair, helps neutrophils find bacteria, kill them. So zinc is very, very common. Okay, so I have a picture coming up here that talks about all the symptoms of zinc deficiency. Okay, moving on to vitamin C. Now, vitamin C is another essential vitamin because we can't synthesize any. So we have to consume foods that contain vitamin C. So it's already, it's plenty full in fresh fruits, vegetables. Think of citrus, broccoli. Again, if you overcook your food, overheat it, it's always destroyed. We also have vitamin C in adrenal glands or our pituitary. So if you're always exhausted, you know, your glands are, adrenal glands are unhealthy, you know, vitamin C can really, really help. So again, vitamin C, how do you develop deficiency? Really poor diet, no fruits, no vegetables. You consume a heavy amount of alcohol. Uh, babies, if they're only given cow's milk, you know, they develop deficiency of this. Smokers have a common problem with this deficiency. Type 1 diabetes, you know. So if you're a type 1 diabetic who inject insulin, you have high requirement for vitamin C. Other than that, any inflammatory disorder like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, if you have a lot of iron overload, you know, if you get iron infusions, that can also cause uh, wasting of vitamin C by the kidneys. So think of, you know, poor wound healing, you know, gums kind of bleed all the time, uh, thickened skin, which we call hyperkeratosis. Those are all symptoms of uh, vitamin C deficiency. Now moving on to the main topic, you know, who benefits from IV nutrition? So people who have issues with absorption, you know, we usually have old saying, you know, you are what you eat is no longer valid. Now it is, you know, you are what you absorb. So people with malabsorption syndrome, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's ulcerative colitis, if you're a bariatric surgery to lose weight, big reason for nutritional problems. Patients on dialysis, like I was saying, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis, they deplete a lot of vitamins. If you're getting chemotherapy, you know, the burden of body is just too intense, so you need IV nutrition. If you have a chronic inflammation, you know, lupus, SLE, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, any other autoimmune disease. Your body is constantly fighting, it's constantly inflamed, your immune system is constantly attacking your tissues, so you need a lot more nutrients to survive. Now, who does not need IV nutrition? Well, pretty much everybody else that doesn't have those problems that I just described. Now, some of you might say, hey, I had an IV nutrition, I took an IV drip, I felt great. And, and I'm not doubting that at all. You, we all feel better after getting IV nutrition since you're providing your body with some key nutrients. But most of the time it is also what we call a placebo effect. So there were a couple of studies done on patients with fibromyalgia, which as you know is a chronic pain disorder. These patients were given a, something called as Myers cocktail and the other group was given a simple IV fluid called lactator ringer. Now both of the groups felt that they were getting the IV nutrition 
And both of them reported that they were actually had a reduction in their pain from fibromyalgia. So that's what we call the placebo effect. The other issue is all the vitamins in IV nutrition are water soluble. So that means as soon as they're introduced in our body, they're distributed throughout our body. Now, which is great because all your tissues are getting the nutrients they need. The problem is that our body has very limited storage capacity for water soluble vitamins. So what happens to most of the vitamins when we give an IV? You know, they're excreted in urine. And you will notice that after getting an IV, IV drip, the next couple of hours, the urine is going to be all yellow and dark. So that's all the vitamins that are now being dumped in the urine by your kidney because your body does not need all these extra vitamins that you just received. Also, when you get an IV nutrition, you know, you get an IV stick, you're exposing yourself to an infection. You got an IV line directly in your bloodstream. You could develop an inflammation of your blood vessel. You could form a blood clot in a vein. We see this all the time in the hospital, patients who are getting IV fluids. You could develop a toxicity. This, that's the worst part. You know, if you have underlying kidney problems, you get a drip with selenium or some other minerals, your kidneys have, don't have the ability to remove this, so you could develop a toxicity. If you get a vitamin C, it increases your risk of oxalate absorption, so you're going to have kidney stones. If you already have kidney stones and you get a vitamin C drip, I mean, you are going to have another flare of kidney stones. That's not a good thing. And overall, there's absolutely no scientific data to show that IV nutrition helps otherwise healthy individuals in any way. That being said, we all need good nutrients. I mean, come on. I mean, our bodies are under immense stress these days. Right, so we're dealing with so much. So let's talk about a better alternative to getting IV nutrition. That would be to getting an intramuscular injection. For a couple of reasons. You know, why is intramuscular injection better than IV? Well, first of all, it's less expensive. You know, it's less painful. You don't have to stay in a center for 30 to 45 minutes hooked to an IV. So that means less risk of infection. Less risk of causing inflammation to your veins because we're injecting in a muscle group. Reduce risk of toxicity from too many minerals, especially you know, if you have a kidney problem. Reduce risk of developing a kidney stone from those vitamin C infusions. But the most important benefit you get with intramuscular injection is that you're not overloading your body with these nutrients. You know, instead you're depositing like you know, a small dose inside the muscle from where it's going to get slowly released over the next several weeks and then your cells can utilize this better you know so instead of dumping all the nutrients all at once your body has a resource it can go to and absolutely borrow it as it needs these nutrients now that being said you will never get the same high levels of vitamin peak that you can get with the IV nutrition but it's not really needed to achieve a very we don't really need to have that high concentration of these vitamins they they are very effective in minute concentration so a high dose is not really needed so that's my whole take on the, the topic. You know, IV nutrition is great for some individuals, but majority of us, including myself, prefer getting an intramuscular injection because that's a better way. Now, post your comments if you had an IV nutrition drip. What was your experience like? Now, if you uh, had an IV drip and you felt great and you disagree with something I said, please put that in the comments. I love to learn. And, and please do like and subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll see you back in a few days. Bye-bye.